Shalom. Before I begin this video, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakhakwadash, and also double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that continually rule very well to this very day. That is continually feeding the flock through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And also Shalom to the whole elect that's continually laboring this work and this labor of love, giving your due diligence to make your calling and election sure in faith, truth, and sincerity, and also in all charity. Now, uh, topic of this video is going to be entitled The Vehicles of Our Salvation, in which, um, as everybody know, America, which is known as Babylon the Great in the Bible, is about to be destroyed by way of fire. All right. And specifically, it's going to be destroyed by way of thermonuclear fire. Okay. This place is going to be turned into a complete desert wasteland by the hands of who these people inwardly call Jesus and which his true name in the ancient Hebrew is Yahweh Shai and likewise the Heavenly Father who is orchestrating this event has already put it in the books or put it in the plan so to speak for this place to go down in which his name, the Heavenly Father's name in the ancient Hebrew is Yahweh, uh, Yahweh it's like you all right, you have the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and the Son, Yahweh Shai. So, Yahweh, the Most High, orchestrated the destruction, and Yahweh Shai is going to be the one to carry it out. And the only way to be taken out or to be delivered out of this coming destruction is by way of what the people call, or what they ignorantly call, so called UFOs, in which those are the chariots of the Most High. You know, because that's the reason why when you go into a lot of these movies uh, depicting uh, so-called UFOs, uh, they get those descriptions from the Bible. You know, that's where they get their ideas from, um, you know, so-called UFOs. And uh, they incorporate it into them into their movies, you know. Now, when they go to the scriptures, the scriptures speak about the chairs of the Lord. Which they're all so-called uh, UF, and what they know today is, is the so uh, so-called UFOs. All right, but really those are the chariots. You know, you you have the the angels that are within those chariots. All right, and that's why you've been seeing a lot of uh, a lot of appearances from the chariots. All right, you know, there's been a lot of chariot sightings. Uh, you know, the the people. That's residing here in America today have been have been observing these uh, so-called UFOs have been popping up everywhere, you know, and the, and the people are, are getting fearful because of that, because they don't know what what's really going on. They think that there's little green men within those chariots, you know. They, they think that there's little green men, so-called UFOs, that's uh, about to invade Earth. It was that's that's a that's a cunningly devised fable, man. That's that's uh, that's something that you hear in the storybook, man. Really, what was in those chariots or those so-called UFOs or the angels or the Lord? All right, and guess what? That's the fashion that our Lord Yahweh is going to come back in. All right, he's going to come back also in the chariot, but this chariot is going to be. A lot more bigger than with your your regular everyday chariot that you see in the sky, man. Because the chariot that he's coming in is gonna blanket the whole entire uh, scope of America. All right. But going back into the topic at hand, you know, though, but these are the vehicles of our salvation. All right. This is our ticket out of here, man. Okay. So Lord's will, we're part of that. Hopefully, late number, we are to be beamed up. Into the chariots to be taken up out of this this hellhole, man, this captivity. All right. Now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the precepts. Uh, this is the book of. Actually, I'm gonna get this first. This is Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, and this is the second verse. It says, "When they see it, all right, talking about the the people, because uh, like I mentioned before, the people are fearful when they see things like this, when they see the chariot sightings in in, in the skies." So right now the people are being troubled, man, and this is part of prophecy. So now now they're starting to take notice of the chariots 
that are appearing in the skies over America. All right. And not only just America, there's other parts of the world that the chariots all also been sighted as well. All right. Read again, verse two, it says, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. Right. Because they think they thinking that our Lord is going to come back on a white horse, like a literal white horse. And they think he's going to come back looking like an Edomite. All right. Which Edom or Edomite is what you is, is the true biblical nationality of the so-called white man. All right. They, they, they're they're going to expect a so-called white man riding on a white horse to come out there, to come out of the skies, man. No. All right. He's going to come back on a chariot. Does say the Bible. Okay. Read again. It says, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. They shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. See? Because they're not going to be looking for Yahweh Shai to be coming back as a so-called Negro with white woolly hair that's going to be on, on top of a chariot. All right? Looking down on everybody. They're not, they're not looking for that, man. They're looking for... Uh, the, the other white meat all right that's going to come back and spread peace on the earth but come to find out is they're going to find a so-called negro a, a, a mad a mad so-called negro a furious so-called negro with white woolly hair that's going to destroy every single person that's that's against you all shy all right now uh um, we'll go from there get the book of Zechariah the fifth chapter is at the first verse it says then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a flying robe all right now that's not talking about a literal fly, flying robe because guess what if you go throughout the scriptures it speaks about a flying robe it speaks about um, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night in the book of Exodus it speaks about a cloud a whirlwind which is not literally talking about a cloud or a whirlwind, all right? Because you got some nut jobs that say that it's a literal cloud or it's a literal whirlwind. No, man. The appearance of the chariots are like a, are like clouds, all right? And when you see them in the sky, when they light up, they look like pillars of light, all right? How can somebody be afraid of a cloud, man? Think about it. If the people are going to be fearful and, and frightened and terror and terror, um, it's like you're terrified. What you think they're going to be terrified of a cloud? Really, man? You got clouds that's up in the sky every single, almost every single day. And you mean to tell me they're going to be terrified of a cloud, man? Get out of here, man. No, when it comes back, he's going to come back in a in a, a terrible fashion, man. And, and, and pursuing uh, what I just read was Masalam in the second chapter or uh, a slot the fifth chapter it speaks about uh, when they'll be amazed at the strangers of their salvation what's so strange about a cloud a, a literal cloud see what I mean well I'm going to go back into this verse here this precept it says then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a flying robe and he said unto me what seest thou and I answered I see a flying robe the length thereof is 20 cubits and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. See? So it's that flying roll, man. That, that, that flying roll talking about a chariot. All right? Now, reading on, and there's a point. It says, verse 3, it said, Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. Right? It's a curse to these people, man. All right? It's a curse to these people because they don't understand what they're seeing. All right. But to us, it's not a curse. All right. To us, that's that's hope. You know, that's that's a that's a glimmer of hope that we see that our Lord is about to return 
and get us out of here, man. All right? That's our hope. Our hope is to be delivered on those chariots. So when we see that, when we, when we see them appear, we give all praise to Yahweh Bashem Shai, man. We say, call halal Yahweh Bashem Shai. Because that's our, that's, that's our way out of here. All right? And when we leave from this from this uh this world when we beamed up we're not gonna go into the chairs with these bodies man all right these these corruptible bodies man these these mortal corruptible bodies no when we go into the chairs we're gonna be changed all right now i'm gonna read that verse again it said this said then said he unto me this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth for everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it, right? So it's gonna enter into the house of the thief, man. Actually, I believe that's a scripture that's uh on there, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go and find it. It may be the uh, let's see, slide here. Oh, Slagia. It's in the same verse. Slagia. Yeah, so the same chapter, Zechariah, the fifth chapter, uh, it's fourth verse. It says, I will bring it forth, talking about the chariots, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. Right, and where's the house of the thief? It's here in America. All right? Because you got stolen, you have a people that's been stolen rape, rob, and murder here on the on the, on the soils of America, all right? So the house of the thief is talking about here in America. The thief is Esau or Edom, all right? And we're the ones who have been stolen, okay? We've been stolen and we've been made a product of, and we're still being made a product to this very day, man, okay? It says, uh, and I will bring it forth, I'm reading again. It says, I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house, and it shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. Right. So it's gonna the way that these chariots are gonna consume this land of America is by way of what? Fire. Alright. Now by way of the chariot is gonna be concentrated fire. Okay? So think about it, man. You have the the, uh, so, uh, the uh, ICBM thermonuclear missiles. You have that fire, and then on top of that, you have the fire that's gonna that's gonna consume, also consume this place, America, which is the the fire that's gonna come by way of the chariots, man. All right, that's a fire on top of fire. That's why when um, John the Revelator, when he when he was seeing the visions, he was looking down. He saw the, uh, America as a lake of fire, man. All right, and that's how you know it's not talking about a hell, man. There's no such thing as a, as a place, uh, a mythical place called hell. All right, the lake of fire is talking about here. In the, the lake of fire is going to take place here in America, man. All right. <clears throat> so that I want to go back. Uh, Book of uh, Revelations, the eleventh chapter, and um, <coughs> fuck. Revelation, the eleventh chapter, and um, started. I'm gonna start at the eleventh verse. It says, uh, "And after three days and a half, the spirit of life entered into them, and the them is talking about the elect, because now you have the men of the Lord as that has risen. All right, and as um." The spirit of life has entered back into into his men, the men of the Lord, man, the prophets. Okay. It says, uh, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them, right? Because when they see us, especially when we go out and, and teach this word week in and week out on the highways and byways, 
speaking about the, the downfall of America. That's a great that's a great fear that's falling upon the people. All right. Why? Because they know it's a certain vibration that comes behind us teaching or going out on the highways and byways and teaching because that's that, that, that vibration that we bring in is the vibration of righteousness. And that's the vibration of Yahweh Bashim Yah Shai. And that's a powerful vibration. All right. Because whenever you had um, back in the ancient world, whenever you had the prophets that would come about, you know something's about to go down, man. All right. Look at um, look at the prophet Samuel. All right. When Samuel was about to uh, make his way, uh, Samuel went on, went on his journey, and the people met him. He asked, they asked him, uh, "Come and thou peaceably." All right, because they knew that Samuel was a prophet. All right, and most of the time when a prophet comes, man, they don't have anything good to say, man. All right, because when the Lord is about to bring down some sort of judgment, he uh, <coughs> sends his messengers, the prophets. To tell the people what type of judgment is coming down So here we are The prophets are back again Telling you what's about to come down the pipeline What's about to happen And the fear is falling upon the people man Alright The only one that you will ever even catch friction from The most friction should I say Is from our own people Because guess what Back in the ancient world they killed the prophets Alright They killed the prophets They stoned them They persecuted them even the apostles So that's why our Lord Made a statement saying that, that The judgment is going to begin at the house of Israel Alright Now uh, <clears throat> Verse 12 it says And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them Come up hither All Right. This is how it shot when he returns Okay And they ascended up to heaven In a cloud Alright once again like I mentioned before It's not talking about a literal cloud all right, and their enemies beheld them. All right, now that's during the time of the deliverance. Now, guess what? At the same time, the elect, are, the elect of the nation of Israel, are being delivered. That's when the destruction is also going to commence. All right, and this is the next verse, verse thirteen. It says, "In the same hour, all right, that same time, man, as the Lord is delivering His elect." There was uh, at the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake was slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were frightened and gave glory to the Most High of Heaven. That's right, and that seven thousand, um, where the scriptures where it says uh, there was slain of men seven thousand. Now seven means completion. All right. Now you have 7,000 in the scripture So if 7 means completion In the scripture you have 7,000 That's an innumerable amount of people That's going to be destroyed in this coming destruction man. Alright And it says the remnant were affrighted And that remnant is talking about the elect man Because the elect is a remnant compared to the whole nation of Israel The Israel is known as the sand of the sea Pursuant to the scriptures Alright So it says a remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the most high of heaven Right Because at the same time We're going to be bowing down To Yahweh Bashem El Shai Giving him glory Thanks and praises That he's delivered us Out of that Out of the destruction And delivered us Out of America And from the hand Of our oppressors Alright But I'm going to go ahead And end it off on that note And Lord's widows Edifying to the elect Of the nation of Israel To next time Once again I want to give all praise Honor and glory To Yahweh Bashem El Shai Bashem HaKadash Also double honors To the apostles And elders of great millstone That continually roll Very well to this very day also, Shalom, peace and safety and salutations to the whole elect. There's also labor in this labor of love that's spreading this ministry and this gospel to the other members of the whole elect in faith, truth, and sincerity, and also in all charity. And with that, it goes to Shalom.